Scott Stossel, My Age of Anxiety, Fear, Hope, Dread, and the Search for Peace of Mind. Embark on a journey exploring clinical anxiety, a mental illness more common than you might realize. In Scott Stossel's My Age of Anxiety, Fear, Hope, Dread, and the Search for Peace of Mind, we delve into the prevalence of clinical anxiety across culture, time, and individuals like Plato, Hippocrates, and even the author himself. Understand the effects and limitations of living with anxiety while contemplating the possible causes and theories surrounding it. Gain insight into the possible sources of anxiety, from genetics to early childhood experiences, as well as the coping mechanisms and treatments available. Demystifying Clinical Anxiety Clinical anxiety, the most common form of mental illness, is a universal condition that spans across cultures and history. It affects one out of six people worldwide and is often mislabeled as a weakness of character. However, renowned successful personalities, as well as millions of Americans, have been diagnosed with this illness. Clinical anxiety is not a barrier to a successful life, and sometimes it is the driving force behind creative genius. The author, a journalist and editor, shares his experience with chronic anxiety and highlights how anxiety is often misjudged by society. Life with anxiety Living with anxiety is a daily battle, reminiscent of living with diabetes, where people must continually manage their symptoms. Performing basic tasks such as speaking in public or traveling can be overwhelming for clinically anxious individuals, who often resort to medication for relief. Their behavior can become unpredictable and embarrassing, with attachment being another significant issue. Anxious individuals tend to struggle when separated from their loved ones. The author shared their experiences growing up, where they would call family friends in fear when separated from their parents. Anxiety can also affect an individual's physical health, leaving them homebound and unable to perform basic tasks. The author shared a personal experience of being unable to explore a town he was visiting due to overwhelming nerves. While anxiety presents many challenges, it is essential to remember that with proper management and support, individuals can improve their quality of life and find ways to cope with their symptoms. The Roots of Anxiety Children's upbringing and mother-child relationships contribute significantly to their anxiety levels. This is according to different theories on the causes of anxiety, which include Sigmund Freud's Oedipus Complex Theory and studies on mother-child separation. While the Oedipus Complex is no longer considered a valid theory, research shows that the way a mother interacts with her child is an essential factor in determining how anxious the child becomes in stressful situations. Children who endure long separations from their mothers tend to have long-term effects such as anxiety, aggression, and social abnormality in adulthood. Thus, it seems that a child's upbringing has a significant influence on their future behavior and level of anxiety. The Evolutionary Adaptation of Anxiety Anxiety is not always a disadvantage, but an evolutionary adaptation that can be traced back to our genes. Our phobias were useful fears in the past, but clinically anxious people fear things that are not intrinsically dangerous. Studies show that anxiety has a genetic facet, and certain genes are related to anxiety. The Stathman gene provides the ability to feel fear, and the RGS2 gene is correlated with highly anxious people. The Physiology of Anxiety Treatment Anxiety is a condition that originates in the brain, particularly in areas that experience hyperactivity due to worry or fear. Clinical anxiety results from a defective neurotransmitter system that leads to reduced serotonin production. Medication, particularly anti-anxiety drugs, can be an effective way of managing anxiety, but it is not a one-size-fits-all solution. Drugs such as Xanax work by binding to neurotransmitters that inhibit the central nervous system's activity, resulting in calming effects. However, medication use can result in severe side effects, addiction risks, and some drugs may not be more effective than a placebo. A 2003 study indicates that only one out of three patients felt better after taking anti-anxiety drugs. The author, who became addicted to anti-anxiety drugs in the past, returned to medication after only a week of trying to quit. 
Thus, medication remains a controversial anxiety treatment option despite its popularity. Understanding Cognitive Behavioral Therapy In his search for a cure for anxiety, the author explores cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. Unlike medication, CBT aims to get to the root cause of anxiety by exposing patients to their fears and challenging irrational thinking. The most common approach used in CBT is exposure therapy. This therapy involves a patient having to confront their fears to learn that there is no actual threat present in the feared object. Cognitive behavioral therapists believe that anxiety is often hidden in a patient's mind, and through therapy sessions, patients can identify and challenge negative thoughts. By using techniques like imaginal exposure, patients can create a hierarchy of things that scare them and then work through them with their therapist. While there is no universal cure for anxiety, CBT is a reliable and effective alternative to medication for many individuals. The author, who has undergone CBT therapy himself, is still fighting his anxiety to this day, but CBT has certainly helped him to reduce the intensity of his anxiety symptoms. In conclusion, Scott Stossel's My Age of Anxiety gives readers an intimate look at the challenges and nuances of clinical anxiety. Highlighting famous personalities who have lived with the condition, the book demonstrates the universality of anxiety as a mental illness. It delves into the evolution, genetics, and upbringing that may contribute to anxiety while shedding light on brain functions and medicinal and alternative treatments. The book encourages understanding and empathizing with those living with anxiety, as well as reassures those who suffer from it that life can continue with relative normalcy despite their condition.